Good morning. Welcome to Fulton Free Will this morning. So glad you are with us in service today. Uh, let me give you a few announcements today. Um, deacons, if we can meet right after service this morning for just a quick meeting, uh, right after service, just right up front over here, your right, my left. Um, also, Wednesday night, uh, our suppers. Uh, for Wednesday night supper this week, we will have a barbecue sandwich, fries, baked beans, and chocolate cake. Amen? Hey. Uh, so uh, make sure you uh, sign up for that if you're going to be here for that. That always gives them an idea of how much to fix. Also, WAC will be meeting tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock uh, down in the women's classroom. Members, please remember to bring finger foods. Also, uh, our last announcement. Uh, don't forget, September 1st is our Saw Sunday. Uh, it's going to be a very special day for us for a couple reasons. Uh, one is our, it's our Saw Sunday, and so we've uh, um, been working towards that over the last year and uh, save a week's salary. And so bring your offering on that morning. And then not only are we just have we will have service at 11, um, but we're going to have a I have a special announcement for. Uh, September 1st as well I just found out this week and so I'm excited to tell you that uh, Dennis and Carol Teague our missionaries to France are in the States and they are going to be with us on September 1st uh, in our services and so what we're going to do is uh, instead of regular Sunday school we're going to all meet in here we want everybody to come uh, whether you're in regular in Sunday school or not we want you to come that day 10 o'clock uh, here in the sanctuary and uh, Dennis will take care of uh, that part of our service, uh, and he, he has he is so excited. I mean, he was he's so excited he wouldn't tell me anything about what he wants to tell us about what God has been doing in France. And so, uh, but he has some. He just says, "I have so many stories I have to share with the church," and he just wants to thank the church for, uh, or he and Carol want to thank the church for our, our continued support over the years. Um, and so we, this is not going to be an offering day for them or anything. It's just for, they want to come to say thank you and be with us. And, and they were excited to be with us uh, for what our day is as well. Uh, so Sunday school will be in here uh, at 10 o'clock. And then we'll take a small break after that. And then we'll have our regular service at 11. Uh, following the morning service, we'll be eating together uh, down in the fellowship hall. So we everybody bring finger food, or not finger food, bring real food. Uh, so we'll be eating together after that, and then we're still putting together some other things that we can do down in the Family Life Center after we eat. Uh, so we just want to make it a nice big day uh, to honor the Lord uh, for all that he has blessed us with. So I hope you'll make plans to be with us on that day of September the 1st. All right, let me get you to stand, and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And after we pray, please remain standing for our first song. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for your blessings to us. Thank you. Lord, for the opportunity to be in your house, to gather together with, uh, as your people, to sing praises to you and to, to honor you through song, Lord, through, through giving, through your word. And Lord, we just pray right now that you would come. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit would work in every heart that is represented here today. Lord, I pray if there is one who needs salvation, that today would be the day that they repent of sin and place their faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for... Um, for those who may need encouragement, that you would encourage their hearts today. For those who's uh, needing a physical touch, Lord, we just pray you'd minister to their bodies. And so, Lord, we just give you thanks for this day, for this opportunity. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Would you sing, What a Mighty God We Serve With Us? What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, 
We serve a mighty God, don't we? Y'all find three people and let them know that we serve a mighty God. attention please um, do you ever have those moments when you wish you could rewind life yes good uh, your pastor needs to rewind a moment and what I need to rewind is the announcement I just made concerning our Saul Sunday because uh, Jamie and I were just talking and we, we we've made an error uh, when we first talked about our Saw Sunday, it was September 1st. What we've been talking about that that's, what is that, Labor Day? Memorial Day. Labor Day? I can never remember. Labor Day weekend. So then we decided, no, it's not, we don't need to do it on the 1st. We need to do it on the 8th because a lot of people will be gone on the 1st. Therefore, I have made an error, and I had the 1st stuck in my mind. So uh, on the 1st, we will have fatigues. In Sunday morning service, we'll have regular Sunday school on the 1st, and our Saw Sunday will be the 8th. And I apologize. It's one of those things that happens. So uh, uh, if you will forgive me, I, I will uh, plead for your forgiveness. So the 1st will be the Teagues, and the 8th will be our Saw Sunday. Um, and I am just wanting to call service off right now. So uh, so I one of those things. Uh, so let's have our ushers come forward, and we will receive our regular tithes and offerings. Let's pray. Father God, do thank you so much for your blessings to us. Thank you how you provide for us uh, as your children each and every day. And so, Lord, we just thank you now that you would um, bless us uh, the way you have blessed us. Lord, thank you for the provisions that you give us. And Lord, we just pray now that you would take this offering and use it for your honor and glory. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to be good stewards of all that you've blessed us with here at Fulton Free Will. We give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs>
Would you stand again with us as we sing Redeemed? Redeemed, how I long to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. can tell I know that the light of his presence with me shall continually dwell redeemed 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 by the blood of the Lamb redeemed redeemed his child and forever I Blessed Redeemer, I think of Him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, His child and song this morning. Would y'all sing Cornerstone with us?
Father, Lord, we come to you today, Lord, so thankful that we can be in your house today and worship you. Lord, I pray that you would just meet with us here today. Lord, I pray that you would uh, be with Brother Michael as he brings our message today. Lord, I pray that you would give him the words that you would have us to hear. Lord, may you be truly honored and worshiped in truth and, Lord, in, in spirit and in truth. Lord, I pray that you would just be lifted up here today in everything that's said and done. Lord, we just ask that you meet with us through this time. We ask in your precious and holy name. Amen. You may be seated. Sounds. Uh, sound, it's, it's an interesting thing to me. Um, the reason is sound can bring out all sorts of emotions, right? It can bring happiness or sadness. It can bring out fear, anxiety, laughter. Um, if, you'll, if you'll notice, if you, and I'm sure you have, if you notice in movies or TV shows, uh, whatever particular scene that's like, in, uh, it's, maybe it's a big part of the, that part of the movie or TV show, there's always kind of music that starts in. And if it's a happy moment, it'll kind of be joyful music. If it's, it's, an, if it's suspense, then the music is kind of dark and deep sounding. And that's because of how music and sounds can affect us as people. Um, and so, so I, I, I got to thinking about sound. And, I, and so I went to Facebook, which I don't do very often anymore. But I went to Facebook. and I, So I asked you, what sounds do you like? And why do you like those particular sounds? So I thought I'd kind of give you a breakdown of what I found. Um, uh, Several sounds were kind of common, and and that we're, but there were some that were unique. And 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 I like some of the unique ones because I I, I could be wrong, but the the two that I like in particular that I'll share in a moment um, were not on the list. So it makes me feel like the sounds I like are unique. Uh, but some of the ones, for example, were uh, some of those common shared ones were birds singing or uh, cicadas uh, making, do they sing? Whatever they do, whatever cicadas do, they do their thing. Um, crickets and frogs at night, um, ocean waves, the wind blowing, rain on a tin roof, certain types of music. Uh, kids, grandkids that, were, that laugh, that, that brings joy. Uh, two people said, and I totally understand this one, the sound of silence. Not the Simon and Garfunkel song, but just the sound of nothingness, um, to which we can probably all relate. Some of the more unique ones that I thought were interesting, um, opening a can of Coke. Yeah, that's it. That's just it. That's the one. Opening a can of Coke. Um, bacon frying. Yeah, there's a smell that goes with that one too, isn't it? Um, uh, coffee making. Amen. That's a good one. Amen. Spirit just moved. And so uh, we had uh, basketballs bouncing. We had shoes squeaking on a basketball court. Y'all can just guess who that probably said those. Um, now this one, I really don't even want to say it. Um, I'm just, I don't even know what to say. A cow bell ringing. And so to that I just say, O-H. Thank you. Um, so my, my two sounds, so though, to me those are some of the more unique ones. Um, I guess a cowbell wouldn't be unique, but uh, if you're in Mississippi. So, uh, but there are two sounds that I thoroughly enjoy listening to. It is relaxing to me. Uh, it, it just, I, I can't explain it. Um, I was going to bring them or try to play them, but I, I couldn't find uh, one of them. So I didn't, so didn't want to have one and not the other. Uh, but but uh, horses on cobblestone. Right, the sound of horses trotting down or galloping down a cobblestone road is just so relaxing to me. And then the second thing is a small paper bag, crinkling, crinkling up that small paper bag. That is, 
I know that's weird. I'm okay with that. It's unique to me. But to me, there is something about that sound that I like. I always have. Uh, and so those are my two sounds that I like. I do like some of those others that were mentioned, not the cowbell ringing. So, but there are others. Um, so this morning what I want to do is I want to share with us four, what I'm calling four joyful sounds. Not the sounds of birds singing or bacon frying or anything like that, but, but the sound of certain words that we find in the Bible. Because with those words bring joy and security in those types of things. Uh, so there's not going to be just one text like I normally do because this is more of a topical sermon. So we're going to look at various texts uh, as we work our way through this. So the first thing that I want us to think about is the joyful sound of salvation that's in Jesus. The joyful sound of salvation. Now, I intentionally and I constantly remind us uh, of our great salvation that we have in Jesus because I don't want us to ever ever put that in the back of our minds. I don't ever want that to be an afterthought. I, 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 don't want to, I just don't want us to ever put that away because it's that important that we always keep our salvation, that Jesus saved us. If we're saved, if we're His, we need to keep that at the forefront of our minds. Um, as, I, as I think about my own, it's you know, salvation is just, it is one of those moments that you just don't forget. It's just, it gets, it is something that's fixed in your mind. It's, it's those days that you don't, it's like those days you don't forget, right? The, the day, if, for those of who are married, you don't forget the day you got married. I, I remember the I remember being in that little choir loft that sat off to the right, pacing back and forth on that carpet. Brother Mead in there with me and my dad, and Brother Mead just looks at me and says, you've got to stop pacing back and forth. You're going to put a hole in our carpet because I was pacing back. I was so nervous. You don't forget those days. Um, you don't forget the, the, the moment your ba that first baby is born. Second, third, meh, you don't know. But that first one, that first one, just kidding. Are my children in here? So, uh, love you, Grant. So, um, but you, you don't forget those. You, you, you don't forget, you probably don't forget that first house you bought. I've shared with you those, the fact that we lived in a basement apartment for seven years as a new couple. On that two-inch thick orange shag carpet that goats had been born on. <laughs> Literal goats had been born on. You don't forget those things, but it had been cleaned. It's okay. They cleaned it. But you don't forget those things, right? Salvation is the same thing. You never forget the moment. One, you don't, you don't ever forget that moment when you knew that God had convicted you of your sin. Because there's not, a feel, there's not another feeling like that. When you realize who God is and you realize who you are and you realize that your sin is, is an affront to Him and the consequences of that. And then that moment when you come and you, whether you did it at an altar or you did it at your house or you did it at camp or whatever you did, but that moment where you repent of your sin and you, you, you give your life to Jesus Christ and you know that in that moment, God looks at you and says, all your sins are forgiven. There's not another feeling like that in the world. And you don't forget it. If you're here this morning, I want to just remind you that Jesus wants to save you too. I, I, wanna, I, I need to read some verses too. It's out of Hebrews chapter 2. If you're here today with, without Christ, I just I have to uh, not only encourage, but I have to warn because that's what I'm called to do. So Hebrews 2, 2 through 4 says, For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? 
It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard. While God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to His will. And so in verses 2 and 3 we see that those, if those in the past could not escape God's judgment because they broke God's law, the writer says, what will it be like for those who reject the gospel? One writer said, this law tells man what they must do, which no one can, no one can follow the law perfectly. Only Jesus did that. The gospel tells men what God has done, right? He says, by the law is the knowledge of sin. By the gospel is the knowledge of salvation. And so then what the writer of Hebrews does is he gives us reasons why we cannot escape God's judgment if we reject the gospel of Jesus. He says, first of all, he says in verse 3, that it was declared at first by the Lord. If you remember Matthew 4, 17, it says, From that time Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This was Jesus' message at the very beginning, and His message never changed. It was the exact same message all the way through His ministry. And when He went off the scene, after He died, was resurrected, ascended back to the Father where He sits at the right hand of the Father, after that took place and the apostles come back on the scene at the day of Pentecost, the message was still the same. Repent. And then it says in verse 3 that it was attested to us by those who heard. Again, this would be the apostles. They heard this message from Jesus. They spent time with Him. Over three years they spent with Jesus, learning from Him, watching Him being commissioned by Him to go do what they did. And again, after He goes off the scene and we come to the book of Acts, this is, listen to what, they, what happened. So Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, Holy Spirit comes down, uh, uh, fills the apostles that day. They go out into the streets. They begin proclaiming Jesus to the world. And when they heard the message of Jesus, it says in verse 37 of Acts 2, Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Now can I just stop there for a second? In a day where we give invitation after invitation after invitation, did you notice what happened here? When the gospel went out, there was no invitation. The people who were convicted looked at the apostles and said, What shall we do now that we've heard this message? That's the power of the gospel. And Peter said to them in verse 38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to Himself. So it was started by Jesus this, this message of repentance, it was continued on by the apostles after they had heard it from Jesus. And then we see also that, that God bore witness by signs, wonders, and miracles in verse uh, 4 of Hebrews 2. And then the fourth thing we see also is that the gifts of the Holy Spirit were distributed according to His will. All of these things, all of these that I've just mentioned, points us to the fact that Jesus Christ is the only Savior and that He is the way to salvation. You say, Michael, what's the importance of that? Well, if you're a sinner, if you're here today without Jesus Christ, the, the two most beautiful words I can give you today are these two words. Jesus saved. He saved me. All those who are here who are in Christ, He saved them. 
He has saved literally billions of people throughout history. And today, he says, he'll save you. If you'll just come. If you'll surrender. A second joyful sound I want us to think about today is the, the joyful sound of separation. This follows salvation. Now, I want to give a couple of, a couple of things up front here. Number one is that the church does not preach and teach separation very much anymore. I, I feel like there's times when, 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 when we've, we've just kind of taken the wrong perspective on this. It's almost like we think that we need to look like the world and talk like the world and act like the world so that we can win the world. And all that's got us is a bunch of worldly people. It, that may be why, it could be why, that the church isn't as strong as it used to be. You see, God calls us to separation. Now, now when we think about the word separation, we can get a, a negative idea. But I want to share with us positive way of looking at it. First of all, throughout history, God has called His people out so that they could be witnesses to the world. Listen to Isaiah chapter 43, 10 and 11. God says, You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am He. Before No, please get these verses. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. In the days of, in the days of Israel in the Old Testament, the nations who would worship all sorts of different gods... And the idea is that, that God would call Israel out and they would, they would be set apart and, and they would be those witnesses to the world to say, listen, there is but one true living God. And that all those other gods that you're worshiping, they're false gods. They're not real. And if we just fast forward a few millennium, it's not changed. It's still the same. It's still the same here in America. If you don't think we'd have a lot of false religions going on in America, just do a little Google search of religions in America and see how many come up. We worship all sorts of stuff. A second thing we see is that God calls us to be separate because we live for Him and not ourselves. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14 and 15 says, For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died. And He died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves but for him who for their sake died and was raised. We are examples to the world of what it means to live for Christ. You know why? Because the world only knows one way to live. For self. That's the only way they know how to live. And before we came to Jesus, we lived the same way. We thought about us. And so we have the opportunity to, to show what it means to live for something bigger and better than just living for self. A third thing we have is that as we live for Christ, we share with the world what Christ can do for them. See, they just, they just kind of build, we're witnesses, we, we, we show them what it means to, to, to live for Jesus and not just live for self. And as, we're, as we are witnesses and we're living our life and we're living for Him and we're loving Him, we can then look at the world and say, listen, I, I just need to tell you that He can do the same for you. 
that as much as he changed me, he can change you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning in verse 16. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to Himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling, or there, another way you can see that is that God was in Christ reconciling, reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making His appeal through us. We implore you, Paul says, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. And then he gives this great, this, these great words. For our sake He made Him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. People, tell, people will say, Michael, I, I don't know what God wants me to do. As a believer, I don't know what God wants me to do. Can I tell you, this one is for everybody that's in Christ. He has called every believer to this one ministry, for sure. And that is the ministry of reconciliation. Otherwise known as sharing the gospel. That He has called all of us to share that message that you who are far off from God can be reconciled to God. That you can have a personal relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. That whatever your past is, whatever your sins are in the past, whatever you may be involved in right now, that there is a God in heaven who will forgive you of those sins, who will make you a new Creature, that the old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new in Jesus. And we, His kids, get to go out and give that message. The message of reconciliation. And again, is that not a joyful sound to the one who needs to hear it? A third joyful sound I want us to think about this morning is the joyful sound of service. We, God's people, get to serve our King while on earth. God calls us in His own time and for His own purpose. And, it, and listen to me, again, it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter your age, your background, or anything else. If you are in Christ, again, you are a new creature. Uh, old things have passed away. You're His now. And He says, I will use you. The only thing that matters is that you belong to Jesus. If you belong to Him, then He will use you in His service. So I just thought about some, some examples throughout Scripture as, you, as we think about people being used from various places in life. So Samuel. Samuel was just a boy when God called him to serve. Jeremiah. He was called to deliver not a very easy message because he was called to to give a message of coming judgment, of pending judgment upon the, the nation of Judah. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet because of the message that he had to bring. But he brought it. Samuel was called as a boy to serve in the, in the temple and, and he did all those things. Jeremiah was called to go take a message that was not pleasant, that was not fun. Because guess what? Even for us, as we think about application of that, there's times we bring a message that is not fun to hear. But it's the truth. Right? It's not fun 
to have to tell someone that your sin has separated you from God. That's not really a fun, happy message if you leave it there, right? If you just left it there. But that's what the gospel, the gospel is good news because you don't leave it there. That's just the starting point. The rest is about what Jesus has done and what he'll do in their life. Matthew. Matthew was a tax collector. Now, when we think about tax collectors, we, we get these images in our mind probably, but, but, but back then it was, it was, we'd probably say worse. Because, see, in that day with, under Roman law, they were just, they, they were said, Romans, the Roman government would say, you go get this percentage for us, this is how much we need, and, and whatever you get on top of that, you can just have. And, and Rome really did not care how much you took as long as they got their portion, right? And so tax collectors were notorious for taking more than they needed to make themselves wealthy. Therefore, they got a very bad reputation. Now, here's what's fascinating. There's Matthew, tax collector. And yet Jesus calls him, saves him. And Matthew is the book that is written to who? Jewish people. And what is the purpose of him writing to the Jewish people? He was declaring to, the, to those that he was writing to that Jesus is Messiah. The one you've been waiting for. So here is a man who was taking from the Jewish people more than he needed to. God saved him, called him, changed him. And then he turned around and said, listen, I've got a message I have to tell you. That Jesus is Messiah. Only God can do that. And then as we always have to think about Paul, don't we? Paul, the persecutor or known as Saul, the persecutor. The one who was literally throwing Christians in jail for the faith. The one who was killing Christians for the faith. And then that man met Jesus. And Jesus saved him, Acts 9, on the Damascus Road. And he became Paul. Paul, who wrote 13 of the 27 books of the New Testament. One third of our New Testament came from Paul. A man who was killing Christians, throwing Christians in jail for the faith. That man who hated Christians, who thought he was doing the work of God by getting rid of them. That man wrote one-third of our New Testament. I want to tell you this morning that God, if you're in Christ, God wants to use you in His service. He calls us to live for Him. He calls us to serve Him, not just in the world, but He calls us to serve us, to serve rather in the church. Why? Why do we serve Him not just in the world, but why do we serve Him in the church? Well, there's different passages that we can look at. I just kind of thought through those things and just kind of jotted several of them down. Many of them come from Ephesians 4 um, and, and, and just a few other places. But it's for why do, we, why do we serve in the church? It's for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for edifying or building up the body of Christ, for unity of the faith and church for knowledge of the Son of God, for maturity in the faith, for reminding us that we need one another. And ultimately, it's for God's glory. For His glory. Why do we serve? For His glory. Lastly, it is the joyful sound of the second coming. Two things here I want us to see. 
Number one is that the promise of his coming is for his disciples. If you go to John 14, there's, there's some interesting verses there. It's Jesus in chapter 13 has just explained to the disciples once again that, that he, he's going somewhere where they can't go, right? And we know that's the cross. And so he, he's, he's explaining this. He doesn't use those words, I'm going to the cross. He just says, I'm going to a place where you can't go. And the disciples are heartbroken over this. And so Jesus in chapter 14 begins to comfort his disciples. And this is what he says in just the first three verses. Because in these three verses that he shares, what we get is this wonderful promise about his second coming. He says, beginning in verse 1, he says, let your, let your hearts not be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. He says, in my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And then he says, if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. That's a promise of His coming. Not only is that a promise of His coming, but that is a promise of His coming for His disciples. And not just those 12 men, but all believers. I just want to remind us today that Jesus really will return one day. That's for certain. Whether it's in our lifetime or not in our lifetime, I don't know. But I do know that he's coming. Because not only does he promise it in John 14, he promised it, if you go to Acts chapter 1, 9 through 11, at the ascension of Jesus. Remember, he ascends back up to heaven, and as, he's, as, the, as, as the apostles and others are standing there, and they're, they're watching him go back to the Father, and they're standing there in just utter amazement. An angel appears and reminds them that just as Jesus has ascended, just as you've seen him go, there's a day coming when he will come back the same way that he left. He's coming. And he's coming for his kids. A second thing I just want to remind us today of the hope that we find in his coming. The hope we have in his coming. You know, the last thing that, that will be put away with, that will be done away with, is death. Right? That's the last thing that's going to be done away with. It's death. And that's going to be done away with when he comes. So I want to remind us, these are verses I just, I love these verses so much. In 1 Corinthians 15, we read these so many times around Easter time, but, but these verses we need, to, we need to get a hold of not just around Easter time, all the time. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, Paul says, beginning in verse 50, he says, I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. He says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written. Death is swallowed up in victory. Amen? O oh, death, where is your victory? No oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Death is swallowed up in victory. That is the hope we have in His coming. 
Isn't it wonderful to know that there is a day coming when death will be no more? Now, we don't like to think about death, and I understand that. But that's a sad reality. That's that old saying that, you know, the first breath you take means you're just getting one step closer to the last breath you take. But there is a day coming when death will be no more. Joyful sounds. The joyful sound of salvation, the joyful sound of separation, the joyful sound of service, and the joyful sound of the second coming. I hope those are joyful words to your ears today. Do you know him? As you think about salvation, do you know him? Are you his? Do you know your sins are forgiven and that you belong to Jesus Christ? If you don't have that certainty, if you don't know that, the writer of Hebrew gives us that warning that, listen, you can't escape his judgment because you've heard the gospel today. You've heard that Jesus will save you. You've heard that he'll forgive you your sins if you'll just surrender to him. Believer, I also want you to leave here knowing that not only does God save you, but he wants to use you. Every single one of us. And it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, how older you may be getting, but he wants to use you. Not only out there, but right here in his church. Are you serving him? Let me get you to stand for just a moment. We'll have our pianist come and play for just a second. Let me get you to bow your heads just in reverence of the moment. <coughs> really simple today really simple and that is this number one do you know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord are you his disciple have you surrendered have you repented of your sins have you placed your faith in Jesus Christ to give you what only he can give you not just forgiveness of sins only but that he can give you eternal life Michael, I don't know Jesus as Savior, and I don't know Jesus as Lord, and I understand that I need Him. I understand that I need to, to repent of my sins, and I need to place my faith in Him. Would you just remember me when you pray? If you're here today and you say, Michael, that's me, I just want you to slip your hand up, put it right back down. No one's going to come back to you say or do anything to embarrass you. I just want to know who I'm praying for. If you're here today and you say, Michael, I understand I need Jesus as Savior Lord, would you please remember me? Real quick, just put it up and put it right back down. Church, are you serving him today? Are you serving him in, say, the ministry of reconciliation? Are you, are you serving him in other capacities? Is there something, is there an area of ministry that the Lord's been laying on your heart and you haven't surrendered to that yet? If it is, I want to pray for you that you would surrender that to Him today. Yes, if you're here today and you say, Michael, that's, would, you, would you remember me? Would you pray for me for service? As I think about where the Lord wants me, would you just pray for me? Can I get you to slip your hand up just so I know who I'm praying for? real quick thank you for your honesty thank you for your honesty let's pray our father we come to you today
like to stop just to say thank you for saving us. Lord, we know you did not have to save any of us, but by your grace, you saved us. So, Lord, we thank you for that today. Lord, there's people in this very room right now that need to surrender for salvation. pray that you would, as, as you've helped them already see their need for Jesus, Lord, I pray that you would help them to surrender to you today. That they would say, Lord, I'm sorry for all that I've ever done that was an offense to you. And that they would receive Jesus today. Father, there's others who said today, Lord, that they that there's areas of their life that they they want to surrender to in service, that they want to serve you probably maybe better and more. Lord, we just, uh, I pray that you would help them to surrender that today. Maybe even right as they're standing in the pews today, Lord, they just surrender that to you. Lord, we pray today who have physical needs we ask Lord that you would minister to their bodies I pray Lord that you would encourage their hearts I pray today Lord for those who's hurting in other ways that you be the God of all comfort Lord I pray that you would help us to surrender all of who we are to you Lord, we just give you thanks and praise today, and we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today. Please come be back with us this evening at 6 o'clock for our evening service. We hope you can make plans for that. Don't forget Wednesday evening, uh, 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 whatever we're having. Yep, it just left me. Barbecue sandwiches, I believe it is. No. What are we having? Yes, thank you. Sorry. Uh, Chocolate cake. That's what I had on my mind. Uh, but uh, let Brandy or Miss Tammy know, sign up, make sure you do the sign up for that so they know how much to make. Uh, it is, we have a great time on Wednesday evenings, and so I uh, hope you'll make plans for that. It's at 530. Uh, so again, thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, I'm going to Steve Wood if you close us in prayer, please.